Yeah. So how I want you to start is on a, in a little baby bridge. So lay down first, set up your feet like you're going into a little baby bridge. So bend your knees in half. Slide the block the flat direction underneath that low back. When you work with the block, you would just want to be cognizant that it's not digging into you. So find kind of the sweet spot. So you feel comfort. Yep. For a moment. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're in a little baby bridge with the block underneath your lower back. Nothing too aggressive. Your feet are anchoring. Your inner and outer thighs are just rounded forward. Yeah, and see if you can kind of cup the shoulders, lift the shoulder blades a little bit, and then bring them back down to the ground and create a little bit of opening of the back bend. Mm -hmm. And then just relax. You're relaxing your lower back on the block. Notice your neck. Sometimes what happens when we lay down, we, we tuck our chin towards our chest. So just find neutral. You can have your palms facing open, the hands on the ground, one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And just begin to feel. If your eyes are wide open, you're feeling very awake, you can keep them like that. You can close them. Just feel the block into the lower back and then feel the rise and fall of your abdominal wall <clears throat> as you connect this morning. A couple more cycles of breath, just arriving. Taking the agenda out and just being present and just kind of going with the flow, literally. Good, blink your eyes open. You're gonna keep your left leg bent just like this. Your right hand will come behind your head like a little pillow cushion. Mm -hmm. When we crunch, we're gonna make sure that we keep our head and our neck neutral, which means your elbow is not gonna crunch up. It's gonna stay wide open, okay? Your left leg is down. Uh, you're right. Let's keep the right leg down. Let's take the left leg up. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take our, I'm doing this the wrong way. Oh boy, I'm having one of those mornings. Left hand to, I want you to switch. Switch the left hand behind your head. Right leg is bent. Yep, sorry. So it's the same leg and the same arm. Uh huh. The right arm's gonna reach back alongside your body and you're gonna reach your hand to your shin. Mm -hmm. So when you do this, what I was saying is I don't want you to crunch your neck. I want the elbow very open towards the sky. Yes, yeah, so you may not go as far. And then you're gonna lower everything down very slow and maybe go to a hovering position. And you're going to bring it back up. So the hand and the shin make this connection. The right leg stays in a little bridge. And then you lower it back down. And then you crunch back up. Yep. And then you lower it back down. So just like that, we're just doing one side at a time and just finding elongation. Try and move on the exhale breath. Obviously, the slower that you go, the more that you're going to feel. So sometimes we start slow and then you naturally start to get quicker and quicker because you want it to get be done, oh, done with. Yep. Turn your right foot forward. Apu. Uh huh. Turn it more forward. There you go. Just so your knee is in alignment. Keep going. Yep. You got it. Nice and long. Neck is neutral. You're not crunching your neck. Everything staying very open. You got it. Take two more on this side. And then we're going to switch. You'll bend your left leg in half and take the foot flat to the ground. Your right hand will come behind the head. The right leg will lift towards the sky. You'll reach your arm back and you're going to take a nice, long, kind of exaggerated lift as you bring the hand to the shin. And then slow and steady, you bring it back down and you elongate. So the hovering of it is really working the abdominal wall, the hip flexor. Everything's getting very long and tight and lean as we pulse up. Yes, the elbow stays open on the right arm, so you may not get as far as you want because of uh, any tightness in the neck and shoulders. Good. The head is supported by that hand as you crunch up. Perfect. Keep going. Mm -hmm. You're moving on the exhale breath, ideally. It doesn't always work out, but we try. I like how he saw what we're doing, and then he left. Yes. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to wait to this this portion of the practice is over and then I will come to my mat. I know, it's amazing. Take two more on this side. On the exhale breath, you move. One more, a little bit more powerful. And then re-bend the leg. Take the hands behind the head, lift the legs up to a 90 degree angle. Uh huh. Your right elbow is gonna come to your left knee. You're gonna bicycle it out. Now in this, in this motion, your elbow is not gonna touch the knee. So I want you to just make a very deliberate movement 
Yep, you're just gonna go in the general direction to keep the neck very neutral and then switch. Yep, so it's deliberate, it's slow, because if you were to take the elbow to the knee, you put yourself in a lot of internal rotation, which we don't want. Yep, take the block out if it's too much. Yep, I actually find the block helps the lower back, but this is a funky block. I don't know what's happening with this one. Yeah, this is a sad block. Keep going, elbow to knee area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep going. You guys look like you're suffering. Don't suffer, just kind of accept it. Yep, keep going. Yep, so maybe not as deep as a, of a bicycle that you normally do. You're just making that movement side to side, side to side, side to side. Good, the next time you get to the right side, your right leg is bent and your left leg is forward, you're gonna reach your arms alongside your body like this. So they're gonna go towards the right side of your right knee. Both hands are gonna come together. So it's gonna be like a little prayer. As you hover and hold, your left leg is floating. Your right leg is bent to a 90 degree angle and your arms are active and engaged, reaching towards the right corner of your mat. Your neck is neutral looking towards the sky. Your abdominal wall is engaged and your lower back's pressing into the mat. If you're not breathing, it gets ugly. Tap into the breath. Come back to center and you're gonna switch to the other side. Yep, switch, neck stays neutral. The breath is flowing. You got it. Come back to center, knees bend, feet come flat to the ground, neck relaxes, baby bridge. Lift your hips up, slide the block out from underneath. Uh huh. And what you're going to do is relax the lower back down to that. <laughs> the elbows are going to come towards the knees like this. We'll make a 90 degree angle, like a little ball with your body. And then on the exhale breath, you're going to reach your arms back and extend your legs forward, shoulder blades, feet, everything lifted, lower back spreading. Just like this. You're going to hug in. And then you're going to kind of wood chopper out. There you go. Hug in. Wood chopper out, arms reach back. You got it. Hug in. Extend out. So the more that you lift, obviously the less invasive it is on the lower back. The closer you are to the ground, the more intensity you're going to have. Keep going. Mm -hmm. So you kind of pick what works. The motion is wonderful. Keep telling yourself it's wonderful. A couple more. Uh-huh. Yep. On the next out, I want you to hold. Hold. Uh-huh. Hold. You're hovering. Your neck is neutral. You're looking towards the sky. Your lower back spreading. You're hovering. Hug your knees towards your chest. Rock and roll across the length of the spine. Come up. Cross your ankles. Step into your first downward facing dog. Just like that. We move on. Down dog. So when we get the opportunity to start with a little bit of abdominal stuff, it really helps. It's kind of the glue of the sequence of the poses. Putting everything together this morning. Take up a lot of space on your mat. Hands are about the width of the mat. Maybe a little bit closer if that's too big for you. Feet are about hips width distance. Maybe you need to pedal it out a little bit. Yeah. There's no right or wrong here. So you just want to take up that space in the mat, let the head kind of drop down. Breathe the backside of your body open. You're like, oh, well, how do I do that? Well, you want to breathe your hips way up off your shoulders this morning. And that may mean that you need to bend your knees a little bit or a lot if the hamstrings are just not responding. And we say it's not good to assume that your body's going to go to the last place that you know you left off on your mat. So take the opportunity to kind of check in. Thumbs, index fingers, baby fingers are all pressing firm into the mat. Outer triceps grip in, toes spread wide. The center of the heel makes its way closer to the ground in time. Maybe it may, may not happen in this lifetime. Roll forward to a plank. In one sweet motion, you come forward. And it's a good opportunity right here to kind of check in. Did I come forward and my shoulders move over my fingers? If they did, then your down dog was not long enough. So set it up so you're stacked up. Your feet are about hips width. The pit of the belly is drawing in and up. Your neck is neutral. You're looking for just a tad. That's a kind of a, kind of a good little dristy point to focus on. 
Good. Firm up. Press into the ground. Maintain stability. Reconnect with your breath. It's kind of a little rocky this morning. Hips go up and back, down dog. Most likely you found your spot now. Right, roll forward in one motion, plank, plank. You guys seem super charged up, right? I should have brought little like coffee, espresso, beans, laced with wheat. No, I'm kidding. Drug the class. Yeah, you come out there. I had the best yoga practice ever. I don't know what she gave me, but it was amazing. <laughs> Hips go up and back, down dog. Good, come forward, plank position in one motion. Drop your knees if you need support, halfway to a push-up. So you need to know what your body needs. Maybe take the first one supported, halfway to a push-up, chaturanga. That chaturanga is your elbows are bending. We're not in an up dog, we're in a chaturanga. Uh-huh, hips go up and back, down dog. Oh boy, <laughs> there's a lot of suffering. Okay, come forward, plank, plank. Suffering is a choice, it's a choice. You can choose not to suffer, you can choose just to experience. Halfway to a push-up. Push-up, knees down if you need. Revisit plank. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. All right, moving on. Look to the top of the mat. Walk your feet there this morning. Walk your feet. So maybe it's two big steps, maybe you have to take 27. Long spine on the inhale. Hands can press into your shins if you feel tight or short. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Let your head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Anchor, rise, drag your hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. So from the top, just very basic, clean A's, okay? Arms go straight up towards the sky. We'll save the dirty sun salutes for later. Dive over, bend knees, forward fold. Long spine sets it up. If your hands don't make it, guys, bend your knees. Step, step to plank, even if you're feeling eager. Yep. Halfway to a push-up, chaturanga. Good. Now you can drag yourself through a back bend. So an up dog, a cobra, whatever works for your body, neck stays neutral. Hips go up and back, down dog. Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step, float, skip, get light top of mat. Maybe just walk. Long spine, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up, anchor. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Get out of your own way, we're going to move. Arms go straight up. Dive over, bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine to prepare, step, step. If you're gonna float, just reminding you that you land with bent elbows, low push up. Up dog is smooth. The thighs lift in the up dog, guys. Hips go up and back, down dog. Arms are straight, look where you wanna go. Step or float to the top of the mat, land with ease. Long spine right here, fold in half. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up, just keep moving and breathing. Dive over, bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine, to prepare yourself, step or float through your vinyasa. Everyone's vinyasas are a little different. The up dog, the back bend is optional. Same with the push up if you're nursing an injury. Meeting in a downward facing dog, hips go back. Arms are active, look where you wanna go. We'll take one more step or float, top of mat, get their light. Long spine on the in. Exhale, fold, root to rise, come all the way up. Feel the ground, go big, drag it to prayer, drop your arms, arms go straight up towards the sky, dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step, step, float through a vinyasa of choice. Up dog is smooth, hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Yep. Come forward to plank position. Float the right foot an inch from the ground. Hug your right knee in towards your navel. Slide it back to a three-legged plank, three-legged plank, three-legged plank, yep. Hug your right knee in. So stay in the plank position. Arms are active, core is engaged. Right leg back, three-legged plank. Small movements, hug the right knee in. There you go. Look forward with your eyes, step your right foot forward and through. Everyone drop their back knee down, it's gonna be brief. If you have a block, place it the long direction at the front of the mat. 
and with your back knee down, step your right foot on top of the block. If someone would prefer a hard block, let me know. Mm -hmm. Back knee is on an angle. You're in a low lunge with your right foot on the block. Make sure your right knee isn't too far forward. It's set up the same way. Yes, integrate that back leg and let's lift the back knee up. Fingertips stay down. So you're in a low lunge with your right foot on the block. Uh, Jody P, walk your left foot over to the left to Tad. So it's the same pose you always take. Your right knee tracks. Good, arms alongside your body. Hovering, you're with your right foot pressing into the block. Yes. Integrate your back left leg and let's rise together, high lunge, crescent lunge. Jody A, step your back foot in. So make it the same that you normally would do. Use this. Start again. Yeah. So it's the same pose. It's just your foot is elevated. There you go. Well, it's not the same because we're, we're changing it. You got it. Couple more breaths, crescent lunge. Good. If your back knee needs to soften a little, fine. So do that. The same posture. Good, hands to frame your front foot. Keep the right foot on the block. You're gonna turn your back foot on a sharp angle, okay? And you're gonna cartwheel up in warrior two with your front foot on a block. Good. Same pose. Look down, make sure your feet aren't all over the place. Yeah, take a second. If someone wants a hard block, it's not too late. I can come with it. Roll your right thigh open. Lengthen your tailbone. Soften the shoulders down the back. Find ease. Couple more breaths. Opportunity to open your hip in a different way in this version of Warrior Two. Keep wrapping your right hip under. There you go. Lengthen your tailbone, sit deeper, let the shoulders drop down the back. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Make this a very soft movement, it's not intense. Straighten your right leg on track with your right foot on the block and reach out, place your right hand to your right shin for triangle pose with your right foot on the block, you got it. You have to grip your outer hips in. You may need to step your back foot in a tiny bit if it's too much. Your front leg will not be pinned straight. It's gonna have a little micro bend or a deep bend if you're a little tighter. Anywhere across the front of that right shin, maybe even up a little higher this morning if you feel tight. Look sideways, look up. Two more breaths. So to get out of the pose is a little complicated, not really so much. Look to the floor, circle both hands down to the mat. You're gonna have to bend your right leg, let your left toes pivot and step to a down dog. Just step back, down dog. Yeah, you just move the block over, down dog, down dog. You got it, roll forward, plank. Halfway to a push up, just clear it out. Up dog or cobra, whatever suits your practice. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog, all right. Come forward to plank position. Come forward to plank. Float the left foot an inch from the ground, just an inch. Some of you are eager to get the leg way into the sky, just a little bit. Hug your left knee in. Keep it a small, subtle movement. Hug it in nice and tight, nice and close. Now, when you re-extend your left leg, it's a small movement. Just slide it straight back to a three-legged plank. Perfect. Hug it in again. Extend it back, small movement. One more time, hug it in. Arms are straight up and down. Now look forward with your eyes, step your left foot forward, drop your back knee. We're just dropping the knee so we can get situated here. Take the block going the long direction, your whole foot onto that block. So it's the same alignment that you normally would have. You wanna track your knee directly over your ankle. Your back leg is on a nice little angle. Perfect, integrate your back right knee up off the ground. Keep your fingertips down to start. Nice, so you're in a low lunge, your back knee is lifted, your foot is elevated on the block. Arms reach alongside your body. Palms face down when we do this, the shoulder blades slide down the back. Press into the block, press into the ground, rise high lunge. And you notice your balance may be a little off. Right, all sorts of stuff starts to happen when you add new things into the pose. 
If the hip points are really far forward, soften your back knee a little. Yeah. Neck is neutral. Your breath is flowing. And you're just getting out of your own way, like where I need to be. You don't need to be anywhere. You're in the pose. You're doing what you can. Hands to frame your front foot. Pause. Keep your left foot elevated. Turn your back foot on a sharp angle. Make sure the feet are lined up, heel to heel or heel to arch. And then cartwheel open warrior two. Same pose, just your foot is on a block. Wrap your inner thigh open. Turn your back toes on a little angle. You got it. You got it, Jill. Perfect. Roll open. And you're going to feel, you're going to feel that hip starting to get an activation that it doesn't normally get. Just as much energy across the right arm as the left arm. Nice, Lila. Soften the shoulders down the back. Close your eyes. Just be present for a few breaths. Flip the palm, reverse the warrior first to keep the leg bent for a beat. Then straighten the front leg slowly on track and then float your left hand to your left shin. You may need to scoot your back foot in a tiny bit if you feel like it's overstretching. Soften the left knee a little behind. Yep. So Jody in the front, a little soft bend of that front leg will be helpful and harder. Yeah, perfect. Zip up the side body, look sideways, look up. So you may hate this, you may love it, whatever it is, just to, you can kind of lean into it right now. Two more breaths. Allow yourself to feel. Eyes to the floor to get out. Circle the hands down, take them both to the mat, peel your right leg, your heel up off the ground, and then step back down dog. Sometimes it's not the prettiest exit. Down dog, it's fine. Down dog. Roll forward plank. Halfway to a push up. Up dog pulls you through your body. Hips go up and back down dog. So now with ease, step your right foot forward. Turn your back foot on a sharp angle, warrior one. It's going to feel like a dream come true. Yeah. It feels amazing. It's so easy. Yeah. You grip your right hip in. Your back foot just turns significantly. And your left ribs pivot forward. Hands to frame your front foot. Plank position. At this point, adding or subtracting push-ups, back bends, whatever works for you. The down dog is where we meet. The left foot lands. The back foot turns. Rise. First warrior on the left side. Hands to frame your front foot through a vinyasa of choice. Maybe you're opting to just go to a dog and hold for an extra breath or two. That is where we will meet. Downward facing dog. Exhale all the breath out. Leave it behind. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Long spine. Weight is forward. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Let's come up. Let's just stand for a second. Drag the hands to prayer at heart and drop your arms. Close your eyes for a moment. Just feel. Just feel. Blink your eyes open, extend your arms straight up towards the sky, heavy in your heels for chair. So sit way back in chair pose, and maybe chair is more successful for you with your feet a little separated. That's cool too. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine sets you up. You can step, you can float, you can do more like a crawl today. Up dog pulls you through your body, nice and easy. Hips go up and back, downward facing. The right foot lands, the back foot turns. Together we rise, warrior one. Grip your right hip, step in. Yes. Hands to frame your front foot, plank position. When you move through your vinyasa, adding or subtracting what feels best. Through the up dog, through the down dog. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. Together we come up, warrior one. So you know, the back is tight. It's all connected. You could pitch forward a little in that. There you go. Yep. Hands to frame your front foot through a vinyasa. I find that when you're straight up and down, it kind of pulls on that area. If you're pitched a little more forward, it feels like a little less pressure. So play with that, okay? Okay, arms are straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float, top of mat. Get their light. Long spine, fold. Chair pose with excitement. I know, you're feeling super saucy right now. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. 
Arms go straight up. Heavy in your heels for chair pose. Just sit way back. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Let the head go. Long spine sets you up nice and easy. Step or float through your version. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns. The goal right now is to definitely draw a little bit more momentum. Hands to the floor, chaturanga. Upward faces. Some of us move really fast, like at hit and run. Others of us are slow, like we're drugs. Right. Left foot lands, back foot turns. It doesn't matter. It's an even playing field here. To the floor we go, because we're going to meet in a down dog after you move through the vinyasa. Okay, down dog. We're going to do one more. Arms are straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float, top of mat. Long spine, fold, chair pose. Press to stand, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up, heavy in your heels for chair pose. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to set it up, step or float through a vinyasa. Upward facing. Hips go up and back, downward facing. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise, anchor come up. To the floor we go, chaturanga. It's not too fast, it's not too slow. It's just right for you. For you, this is your practice. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. You got it. To the floor we go through your version of a vinyasa. We'll meet in a down dog and we'll hold for a few breaths. Okay, let's look where we want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Get their light. Long spine, fold. Let's sit into chair. Weight moves into the heels. Drag the hands to prayer. Inhale the breath. Exhale, we're going to twist to the right. So maybe lower back is sensitive. You take less of an abrasive twist. It could be more of like a hook, like an air twist. What's important is that your feet, your shins, your knees are all lined up together. So the right knee isn't sliding past the left and vice versa. If you wanna open up your arms, that's wonderful. If you're happy with this, stay right here. Spine is long, you're looking sideways, looking up. You're trying to not look back because we have the tendency to round, weights in your heels. Chair pose, pull it around. Chair pose, pull it around. Float your right foot an inch from the ground, just an inch. Press to stand, right knee draws in towards the navel. You're standing up with your right leg bent in half and your arm straight up. Good, like without using your hands here, just like a little like hinge of a door gate, your right knee is gonna open a little to the right, just a little. The second you feel that your hips come out of alignment, the pose is over. The less is more. Your arms are elevating you. Your side ribs are elongating you as well. And you're standing up tall on your left leg. You can use your hands now to get that leg up into tree. Yeah, find tree pose. Tree pose, regrow the branches. Maybe your eyes are forward. Maybe you start to let them drift a little upwards. Your right foot is pressed anywhere against the instep of the left leg. I just don't recommend the pressing against the knee. So a little higher, a little lower is recommended. Quiet your breath, quiet your mind and just be. Keep the arms up, let the right knee swing forward 90 degree angle without using your hands. There you go. Keep the arms up, lower the right foot down to meet the left. Stand up tall with your arms straight up. Sit into chair, weight moves into your heels. Way back, drag your hands to prayer. Inhale your breath, hook and twist or air twist. Look towards the mirrored walls. So your alignment is for, first and foremost. So I'm less interested in how deep you're going in these poses, much more interested in how you're aligning your body to be safe and have success for today. Watch that the right knee doesn't slide past the left. 
spine stays long. Mm -hmm. Try not to look back. We have a tendency of rounding everything when we do that. Your breath is just flowing through your body and it's supporting the pose. Chair pose, pull it around. Float the left foot an inch from the ground and then stand up without using your hands. So your arms extend up, your leg lifts to a 90 degree angle. You're standing tall, the contraction of your right quadricep. Soften the shoulders down the back, fix your eyes. And like a little gate, just let your left knee start to swing open. When it goes too much, we come out of alignment in our low back. So it's important that you're just swinging open a little. Sometimes a little feels like you're not doing as much, but just pay attention to the small things. And then it's like things start to happen. Flex the foot. Yep. Stay real long through that side body. Let the shoulders drop down the back. You could use your hands to get the foot into the tree. Yeah, I haven't quite been successful with landing the foot. I mean, people could do it, but. Stand up nice and tall. You regrow your branches. You want to feel like you can hook your hips in. So it's a similar pose as that warrior two. Like you really want to feel like you're grounding and lifting up. The breath is flowing. Without using your hands, just let the left leg kind of swing forward. Keep a 90 degree angle, flex the foot. You got it. Lower the left foot to meet the right foot. Forward fold, just fold. Nice work. Long spine sets you up. You're gonna step, float, skip, however you wanna get there this morning. Move through your vinyasa. The up dog pulls you through your body. The hips move up and back, downward facing dog. The right foot lands, the back foot turns. Together we come up, warrior one. Yeah. Drop your arms alongside your body. Interlace your hands. If you're compromising your shoulder, just take a little bit of a looser grip. Inhale the breath, open the chest, exhale, fold for humble warrior. A couple ways you can take humble. You can rest your stomach on your thigh. It's a little bit more cozy. You can scoot your right shoulder to the instep of the right leg. What we want happening though is the entire left side of the body, that looks great, Kristen, is turning forward. So you're not in a warrior two. You're really in a warrior one. Let the head drop if you're able to get in there a little, little schnooky with yourself or just kind of stay neutral if the neck and shoulders, that's perfect, Rima. Feel your right hip grip. Feel your back left leg empower the pose. And then reconnect with your breath so you can support and stay in a little longer. Nice, Amy. Anchor through your legs and start to come up. See if you can keep the bind if that's available. Straighten your front leg, right leg on track. Pivot your right toes towards the mirrored wall and have a wide straddle with your feet. So I like this pose with the toes just turned in a smidgen. If you can keep the hands bound, that's awesome. Inhale, lift the heart and chest. Exhale, we'll come down the middle. So when you come down the center here, if you start to move halfway into it and you're like, it doesn't feel good on my shoulders, listen to your body. You can, hands can relax to the floor of the mat. You can hook the big toes, the sides of the feet. Like it's important that you breathe and you move how it suits you. Let the head drop, yeah. You can have the hands resting on blocks. I mean, there's so many different versions. Your head is dropping below your heart, which is what we're looking for. And your hips are lifting up nice and high. Release any binds that you have. Slide the hands to the floor directly underneath your eyes, your shoulders. Inhale to a long spine. Good, slide your hands to your hips. Come halfway up, come the rest of the way up. Open up your arms nice and big. Spread them across your chest. From your right hip, turn your right toes forward. Your back left toes will need to turn a little bit so the hip kind of finds its way into right rotation. Inhale the breath, exhale, find your way into trikonasana. So you're not standing on a block, so. See the difference. Right hand anywhere across the front of the right shin or maybe a block to the outside of the right calf speaks to you today.
Lean back a little bit in the pose. You got it. Hook the hips in. Really nice job, everybody. Very nice, juicy breathing happening. Lock it in, look down, and let's step up together into Arda. So working a little on balance. Use the block. If it's there for you, use it. If you're looking to challenge yourself this morning, you can work on lifting the fingertips up off the block once you find your way into the pose. Soften behind the right knee. That was good, Amy. Flex the left toes, and then broaden across the collarbone and the chest. Look sideways, look up. Grip your right hip in. Any version that now you would like to take. If you prefer to bind in the pose, give it a go. If binding is not for you, just keep it simple. Keep it basic. Looks good, Jess. Turn your bottom right ribs, everybody. Lift from your inner left thigh. Regular half moon, which means if you took a bind, just release into a regular version. The transition is doable. We're gonna step back to triangle. So do it very, very slow. That's the trick, you can do it. Step back very slow, pull up anywhere across the right shin, revisit triangle, three breaths. That was great. Requires a lot of core strength to do it the right way. Eyes to the floor, we'll take it to the ground and move ourselves through a vinyasa. We nailed it. Pull yourself through an up dog if that's available. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. So not missing a beat here. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. We come up together, left side warrior one. Yeah, see, I think that works well. Drop your arms alongside your body. Opposite grip, I know this is tricky for some of you. Yeah, opposite thumb crosses, opposite baby finger crosses. Interlace that grip, inhale the breath, exhale, come forward. Your version of humble. So for me, I just rest my stomach on my side these days and that seems to get the pose where it needs to be. If you're a little bit more flexible and you can get in there, the left shoulder snuggles its way in, but the right side of your body is doing a lot of work to that activation forward. That's good. Grip your left hip in, because there's a tendency as we stay in the pose to fatigue and kind of wing itself out. Yeah, if it's too much, Amy, you back out, okay? Looks good, though. Back leg trumps the pose, so engage the muscles around that right quadricep, and that's going to help. Anchor, keep the bind. Let's rise together. Come up with the hands bound, ideally. Keep it. Straighten the left leg on track. Turn your left toes in. Pivot towards me. Find your distance. Before you just go for it, make sure it feels doable. Inhale the breath, and then exhale, you come down the center. So when you bend your knees, the hips lift. And then if you get down there and you're like, all right, the binding stuff isn't working, release it. Like nothing's forever. It doesn't work for everybody. Step, turn your toes in a little. There you go, perfect. And then open your elbows. And there you go. Nice job, guys. Couple more breaths. Come to the fingertips, long spine, which means if you have the bind, just dump it. Hands to your hips. You come halfway up. You want to keep your weight a little more forward. Come the rest of the way up. Open up your arms wide. So really make that commitment here. From your left hip, turn your left toes out, and then your back right toes turn on a smidgen in. Find your distance and find your way into trikonasana triangle pose. Some of us do better with a longer, bigger one. Some of us need a tighter, shorter triangle. We need blocks. We need support. It's all good. But keep a softness behind that front left leg. Yeah. There's a little lean back action, but you're not going into your low back. Be mindful of that. David, it looks good. Yep. So the left foot is forward, the left hip's gonna stay gripping in. Now all that 
days, look down and see if you can make one sweet motion forward into your Arda. It's kind of like just a step through. Right hand can always come to your hip for balance if you need a little help. The right leg lifts up, the toes spark. Yeah. Add in whatever feels right and doable for you or just be basic. I sounded like my 10 year old. You're being so <laughs> basic. You're canceled. I'm gonna cancel you. Turn your bottom ribs and breathe. You quiet your mind, you steady your breath, and you find the posture. Regular Arda, if you embellished. Regular Arda, slow, 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 slow. So the best advice I have to getting back into triangle is to move very slow. Move very slow and see if you can step back into it. It's almost like you have to visualize the pose first and then land. There you go. The block moves with you if you need it, and you revisit your triangle. Take it to the floor through a vinyasa. When you hit your push up, yep, drag yourself through the up dog right after that. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Lean forward on your left hand and let's hit Vashisthasana side plank. So left hand, Vashisthasana side plank. Yeah. If you need to modify, please listen to your body. Drop your bottom right, uh, left knee down and modify the pose. If you want to try and add in the tree here, go for it. The top leg can bend. Yep. Kristen, I like it. It's a good little. Nice, Jess. All right, listen, you're going to hit plank, but hold tree if you can. If not, find plank and make a tree. You got, yeah. Yeah, it's plank with a tree with your right leg. Your right knee is going to shift to the outside of your right, uh, right tricep in the general direction. So it's going to move away now. Yep. Keep looking forward. Then hug your right knee straight in. Straight in, straight in, straight in. And then step your right foot smack in between your hands. Turn your back foot on a sharp angle. Cartwheel up, warrior two. It's going to feel a lot better than it did before. Warrior two. Warrior two. Heavy in your legs, you got this. Reach out, slide your right hand to the outside of the right foot for extended side angle A. I like a block, arm can also rest on the top of the thigh. Yeah, the block can go up super high. So you really make this nice marriage between the outside of the right leg and the inside of that right arm. There's a gripping of that right hip. Now, the top left arm can be straight up or up and forward if you have more range of motion. Alexi, it looks good. Just take your baby finger and tip it down towards the ground. So turn, there you go. Straight line of energy. Rima, move your block back a drop or, yes. Soften the right shoulder down your back. There you go. Probably where you're tight. Interesting. Nice Jody squared. Activate your left leg. Uh-huh. It's just easier. Yeah. Because they're both doing a very nice job, so they should get, they should get credit. Warrior two, pull it up. Warrior two. Circle it to the floor plank position. Move through vinyasa or take it out and just hit a down dog and, and get yourself together. Yeah. All right, here we go. You're gonna lean on your right hand for Vashi stops in the side plank. So pick a version that you know you can do, okay? Get over not being in the most deepest one. And then add in the tree if you did on the other side. If it's if you're successful on this side, give it a whirl. Is this the better side? Yeah. We have a favorite side always. Top arm can reach up and forward. If you want more, just stay. Great, you're gonna hit plank with the tree. Now, if you don't have the tree and you wanna like, you know, think about the tree or add in the tree, give it a whirl. 
Yep, lengthen the tailbone, shoulders kind of broaden. So the left leg is in this exact external rotation. So all you're gonna do is drag it away and take it closer towards the back of that tricep, just in the general direction. And then you'll hug it straight in to the center line. Look forward with your eyes and step your left foot smack forward. Turn your back foot sharp on an angle, cartwheel open warrior two. So it's not a long hold, you're just getting yourself in, wrapping that inner thigh open, lengthening the tailbone, doing all the stuff, all the stuff. You okay, Ali? Okay, that's good. Thumbs up is a good thing. Reach out, slide your hand to the outside of the left foot to a block or maybe opting for the modified version, arm to top of thigh. If you got stuff going on in your low back, your shoulders, your neck, your brain, whatever, modify. Take the block up high. Top arm can reach up and forward if you want more, but you have to keep your arm very active and straight. Left hip grips in, bottom ribs turn. That was a wild crowd. That's why 1050, the beer spilled on Sasha. She was, that was it. Oh yeah, she was like, I'm off, done. Warrior two, come on up. Warrior two, come on up. They were rowdy up on the top there. Oof. Take it to the floor, Vinyasa. But he was very good. Upward, that we're talking about Zach Bryan. If you have no idea who we're talking about, that's who this is. Yes. Down dog. All right, my friends, keep it together. We have a little bit more work to do, and then I'll set you free. Step your right foot forward, crescent lunge. Crescent lunge. I think everyone needs a little Tuesday, you know, energy. So what we're going to do is, is you're going to press up, drag your left leg and hug the knee in. Yeah, balance might suck. It's okay. Keep the arms up if you can or hands to prayer. Grab for some balls. Yep. Step back. Crescent lunge. You can soften the back knee. It's like a big matzo ball hanging up there. Yeah. Come on up. Up. It doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. Guide it back. Cross and lunge. One more. Drag it up. Drag it up. Drag it up. Keep the leg lifted. Drop your arms alongside your body. You're going to find warrior three. So the leg's going to go back. Warrior three. Use blocks if you need to. Soften the right knee if you need. Hands can be in prayer anywhere alongside your body. The whole pelvis, everything is neutral to the ground. Left hand to the floor, right hand to the flat part of your back, revolved Arda. If you're suffering from any injuries and revolved Arda doesn't suit your practice, please just guide your left foot back and find twisting triangle. That's the alternative and it's good to know. Grip your hips in, lift from your inner thigh, you got it. So it's good to have options. Yeah. Scissor the inner thighs, twist open. Top arm can peel towards the sky, it's optional. Right hand to the floor, giant step back, low lunge, pause. Drop your back knee, everybody. Yep, back knee is on an angle. Sweep your arms up, supported lunge. Mm -hmm. Drag your hands to prayer. Inhale the breath, hook the elbow and twist. So guess what? This is solid, you could stay like this, yeah. We've done a lot of work in our hip flexors, balance and stuff today. So know that it's okay to stay with the back knee down. You're still getting a solid posture and experience. If you're feeling super energized, you just went on a retreat, you're away from your family for a week. You didn't go food shopping, engage the back leg and join us. Yes. Breathe your collarbone open. You got it. Lean back a little bit to get into it. At the end, it gets challenging. We all want to give up. Change happens in the moments where you, you struggle just a tiny bit. Hands to frame your front foot. Down dog. Down dog. 
not trying to prove anything. So just being a down dog, let it go. Step the left foot forward, crescent lunge. We have to be fair to the right side and the left side of the body though. So rise, crescent lunge, here we go. So in a perfect setting, I'd want your arms up, but if the balance feels off, slide your hands to prayer or your hips. Drag your right leg kind of up for the first one and give it a little power as you drag it up to a 90 degree angle. That's it. Now you'll keep the arms up, engage, and take a giant step back, crescent lunge. This is pro proprioception. So as we get older, this is harder. That's why it's good to do. Drag that right knee up. Yep, flex the foot. Guide it back, just do your best. Nice. Drag it up, give it a good squeeze. Step it back. Last one, we'll hold, drag it up and pause. Arms are up, leg is engaged. Drop your arms alongside your body, anywhere you want your arms, you're gonna thread your right leg back for warrior three. If your balance needs a little help, blocks are great. We've got a collection going on here. It's okay. So right side of your body, Jody, in the front, turn it down. That's it. Soften the left knee, everybody. Lift your heart a little higher. Now the right hand's going to hit the ground. I like a block and I like it up nice and high. The left hand on the flat part of the back gives you a lot of good info, like what's happening in my body. Then you start to look sideways and you move into the twist. For some reason, it doesn't work. Step into the uh, revolved triangle instead. So turn from your right side down, inner thigh points towards the floor. Lift up and twist, nice. Nice, Chrissy. Left hand to the floor, pause. Giant step back into a low lunge and I want everyone to drop their back knee down and have it on an angle. Yeah, sweep up supported lunge. Make sure the left knee tracks over the ankle. The right thigh is on a nice angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hands to prayer at heart. Inhale the breath. You lean forward a little. Hook the elbow and twist. Your injury is getting better. I can tell. My bad. You can, yeah, you're moving better. Nothing's perfect. Let's not rock the boat. Engage the back knee if you want to lift it up. Just one injury at a time. Lean back a little, get in there. You can just stay upright, David. Just stay upright. Yeah, and just keep your torso forward. Just stay in, or maybe one arm back, one arm forward. That's it. Any way that you're getting an opening for yourself. So you know this practice is working when you start to find little ways to do things different that work for you. That's calling being mindful. That's what we want. Two more. Don't suffer, Lila. It's going to be okay. Hands to frame your front foot. Down dog. Roll forward plank. Halfway to a push-up. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back. Down dog. Let's guide the right knee forward for a half pigeon. We went heavy with Chris today. Sorry. Half pigeon. If this doesn't feel good, you're dealing with an injury, please let me know. We have other options. Mm -hmm. Switch left side. If you're on your back, just switch sides. Yeah. If you're seated, just switch that way. 
him. It feels it looks good. You, I've hoped for myself and half pigeon. Good, start to come up nice and slow. If you're already seated, you just have to extend your legs forward. If you're on your back, uh, I want everyone seated just for a beat, okay? Legs go forward. Yep, stretch the arms straight up and then exhale, fold over the legs just like this. Yep, if you can't grab, you don't grab, you just grab anywhere along the sides of your legs and just give yourself a forward fold. Let all that jazz go. Good, you'll pull, pull your torso up. You'll place your block to the side of your right calf. We haven't done this in a little bit. So yeah, real quick. Um, you can go low, you can go medium, you can go high. That's really ambitious. Flex your feet, press your hands alongside your body. So think the dasana, which is the best version of standing up really tall. We wanna stay out of our low back, okay? So zip up your core, press your palms down, let the shoulders drop down the back and you're gonna lift your right leg to the outside. Uh-huh. And then bring it back and then lift it up. So zip up the core, make sure you're not leaning forward or back and over. You got it, flex, press firm, lift, flex, lift, flex. Give me two more on this side, they get challenging. One more, bring it back around and pause. Take it to the other side. So a lot of times what happens is we get real sleepy in our hip flexors, right? So this is a great way to activate everything. Sit up really tall, press, firm, lift. Bring it back around, lift. You got it, sit up taller, bring it back around. You got it. Three more, lift, two more, lift. One more, you got it, lift, one more, let it go. Lay down, bend your knees, bridge. Where we started, we're gonna do the whole class over again. <laughs> bridge pose, two sets before we hit Shavasana, okay? So bridge with a block, bridge with blocks under your feet. If you have two blocks, I recommend trying that out. Slide the block so one is under each foot and elevate the floor up. Yeah, if lower back's an issue, definitely do that. Fingertips skim the blocks uh -huh, or block underneath your low back. Yeah. So if you're here and you're like, okay, I wanna move on from this position, move on from this position. If you need to reset, come down, take a breath in and then we'll repeat. An opportunity to go up into a full wheel. If you're halfway there and you can just flip your palms and kind of scoot yourself up, give it a go. If it's something that's not in the cards for you today, just repeat a more restorative version of this. You want your feet forward, your knees forward, and your inner thighs turning down and under. There's no peer pressure, so just do what your body and your mind need. Nice, lift up a little higher. Exhale the breath, you come out slow with control. Nice work. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Remove any blocks out from underneath your low back. Extend your left leg forward towards the front of the room and hug your right knee towards your navel. Good. Drop the right knee over towards the left for a very basic supine twist just to release that low back. Yeah. Sometimes the basic version of this is the best. Come up to center, relax the right leg out in front of you. Just nice, long, simple movement. Hug the left knee in, give it a good little squeezy deezy, and then take it over to the right. Yeah.
Good, roll up to center. Give yourself one last little squeeze inward. And then you'll set up for final Shavasana, which is the master pose. Master pose of them all. Uh-huh. Make yourself comfortable. Drop down. For the next minute or two, just complete stillness. Maybe cover your eyes. Exhale everything out. Big breath in, full complete breath out. Arms up over the top of the head. If you prefer just to stay down and kind of close your practice that way, that's cool. Hug your knees towards your chest, give them a big squeeze in. And rock yourself up facing any direction that works for you. It really doesn't matter. Everyone can be going different, different ways. Sitting up nice and tall, shoulders drop down the back. Have a moment for yourself. A moment of closure, hands can gather to a prayer. If you like that, bow your head and just feel, feel the effects of this practice. It's pretty awesome. It's always changing. It's always evolving, it's always shifting. That's what keeps us coming back. Lift the head, open the eyes. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, guys. Hydrate yourselves, drink plenty of water. Lots of good stuff happening here at Revel. We have um, March Madness happening, Vinyasa Foundations workshop. We have teacher training. Thank I'm running you. In um, October, if you're interested.